Welcome back to Chapter 5, Section 3. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to the original Chapter 5, Section 3 video. It was unexpectedly and unexplicably cut off, with just two pages remaining. So this little addendum is to cover the last two pages of your notes. With this fifth exploration, we're going to establish our Pythagorean identity. Now, the Pythagorean identity is based on the equation of a circle, which is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. I can establish this identity by some, some simple algebra. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my equation of the circle, and I'm going to divide everything by r squared. Well, when I divide by r squared, I can then factor, so I can pull that I can pull that square out so that I have x over r quantity squared plus y over r quantity squared is equal to 1. Well, x over r is cosine, and let's just use theta as our argument. So we have cosine theta squared. y over r represents sine theta, so sine theta squared is equal to 1. We've substituted in these trig function values here. Now, they, they chose to rearrange the order. It really doesn't matter which way you write it. And then they turned it into customary notation. Now, this notation is important. Note that we are squaring the value of the sine function at some angle, and we are squaring the value of the cosine function at some angle. We're not squaring the angle, so that's something to make note of, that we are squaring the function value not the angle, not the argument. We're squaring the function value, not the argument. Now that matters. Um, if I have sine of 30 degrees and I square that, I'm squaring the sine function value. I'm not squaring 30 degrees. I don't have the suddenly the sine of 900 degrees. It's still the sine of 30 degrees, and then I square that value. This last line, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, is what we call our most basic Pythagorean identity. Now there are two others that are variations of this Pythagorean identity. We already divided by r squared. We obtain the other two by dividing by x squared or by y squared. Or I can look at it by working with the trig function values. If I don't want to go back to my equation of the circle, I can start with this basic Pythagorean identity, and I can divide by sine squared theta or cosine squared theta. So we're going to do both of those things. We're going to divide everything first by sine squared theta, which gives us 1 plus and then here I have um, cosine theta over sine theta quantity squared is equal to, well, 1 over sine theta or sine squared theta is going to be the reciprocal, so it would be cosecant squared theta. And then I can rewrite this in terms of cotangent. So there is my second alternate, my second variation to that um, Pythagorean identity. And then for the third, I divide everything by cosine squared theta. So this time, sine squared theta over cosine squared theta, well, that's just sine theta over cosine theta quantity squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. And then I replace that with tangent squared theta, and I have the other variation. When I try to keep these straight, the way I do them in my head is to remember that for Pythagorean identities, the C's go together. So when I have 1 plus cotangent square theta, that's equal to cosecant square theta. And then the other one is just what's left over. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at this next problem. We are given a value for sine theta, and we're given a quadrant. If theta falls between pi and 3 pi halves, we're in quadrant 3. Using that information, those two items, we're going to find the exact value of each of the other five remaining trig functions, and we're going to use the Pythagorean identity to do so. Well, which Pythagorean identity will we choose? We have three. 
we're going to use the one that uses what we have. Well, we have sine, so we're going to start with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, where I can plug in the value for sine as negative 2 thirds. Simplify. Now I need to subtract 4 ninths from both sides. When I do that, I'm going to rewrite this 1 so that I have a common denominator. I'm just solving for cosine. So I get here that cosine squared theta is equal to 5 ninths, and to finish solving for cosine, I need to take the square root of both sides. Now when I take the square root, I always consider plus or minus. Except in this case, I know whether it should be plus or minus because I am in quadrant 3. Because I'm in quadrant 3, right here, I know that cosine is negative. So cosine of theta is equal to the negative square root 5 over 3. Um, so we were given we were asked to find the exact value of each of the five. We were given sine. Let's go ahead and just write these out. We're given sine theta is a negative two thirds. We found cosine theta is a negative square root five over three. From that, we can discover tangent theta because tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta. So in quadrant three, tangent is gonna be positive. The threes are going to cancel out. Now if I do this, um, look at the arithmetic for this. When I divide with fractions, I multiply by the reciprocal. So those threes are going to cancel out and I'm left with a negative times a negative is a positive two over the square root of five. When I rationalize that denominator, I get two square roots of five over five. And then my three reciprocal functions Reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Reciprocal of cosine is secant. And I need to rationalize there. So that becomes 3 square root 5 over 5. And then the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. And if I just start here, I can flip this one, find the reciprocal of it, and I don't have to undo my rationalization. So there's all of my uh, six Pythagorean identities for that angle theta. Okay, one more page. Possibly. There we go. All right. Find the exact value. Now, when it says exact value, I know that I'm not pulling out my calculator um, because calculator is going to give me an approximation unless I'm just dealing with my quadrantal angles. Find the exact value of each expression. Well, 1 over cosecant square of 35 degrees. The reciprocal of cosecant is sine. And then I have cosine square of 35 degrees. Now, let's stop and think about this for a minute. Our Pythagorean identity says cos sine square of an angle plus cosine square of an angle is 1. So that's my Pythagorean identity applied. On B, I have cosine of an angle over sine of an angle. Well, cosine over sine is cotangent. So that would be cotangent of pi thirds minus cotangent of pi thirds and anything minus itself is zero. All right. Example or exploration six, even in odd properties. Recall from what we've already done that function mm -hmm. is even. Oh, you know what? That's not what we've already done this semester. Think back to college algebra. You have an even function if when you plug in a negative angle, a negative theta in this case, in college algebra we used a negative x, we get out the same thing that we started with. So when we plug in a negative, nothing changes. And a function is odd if when we plug in that negative, everything changes. We get out the opposite of what we started with. Our primary example, most basic example of an even function was our parent quadratic function f of x equals x squared. That's an example of an even function. And then our primary most basic example of an odd function was my cubic function. We had that squiggle in the middle centered around the origin. Um, f of x 
equals x cubed. So that's an even function. That's an example of an odd function. How does what does this look like when we get to trig? Precal. What types of functions are the sine and cosine functions? Well, one is even and one is odd. So we're going to look at this unit circle and we're going to think about which one is which. Um, so let's think about this. Let's look at Let's say that this angle is a 60 degree angle because it looks close, right? It, it looks like it could be about 60 degrees where it's sketched. Now, it's going to be true for any angle. We're just going to pick one and think about it and see what we can come up with. If I do the sine of 60 degrees, uh, it's going to be the 60 degrees in quadrant 1. Sine is positive. In fact, it's a positive square root 3 over 2. What if I looked at the sine of a negative 60 degrees? Well, negative 60 is in quadrant 4. It's still square root 3 over 2, but since we're in quadrant 4, sine is negative. So I went from a positive value, and when I changed the algebraic sign of the angle, it changed to the opposite. So sine functions are odd because changing the algebraic sign of the angle changes the function value, that value of sine at that angle. So when I change the, the from positive to negative, negative theta, the value of sine changed from positive to negative. What about cosine? Well, let's think about cosine at 60 degrees. Sine is 60 degrees is square root 3 over 2. Cosine is 1 half. What about if I rotate clockwise and I look at cosine of a negative 60 degrees? Well, in quadrant 4, cosine is still positive. So it's still a positive 1 half. Cosine functions are even. Because when I change the algebraic sign, positive or negative, of the angle theta, the cosine value of theta does not change. Cosine is an even function. In general, you only have cosine and its reciprocal function that are even. Cosine of a negative theta is equal to cosine theta, and secant of a negative theta is equal to secant of theta, because these two functions depend on the x, not the y. They are the only even functions, because they're focusing on this x-axis. It's positive in quadrants 1 and 4. It's negative in quadrants 1 and 3. The other four functions are all odd. Sine of negative theta is the opposite of the sine of theta. Cosecant of negative theta is the opposite of cosecant theta. And the same is true for tangent and cotangent. Those are all odd functions. Let's apply that. Let's use that information. Now, here is why this is important. We are never going to leave an argument negative. We are interested in which functions are odd and which functions are even because you're going to never leave a negative argument. So that angle inside uh, whatever I'm looking at here is not going to be left as a negative value. I'm always going to apply is this function even, is this function odd, and take care of that. Now I said ne never, never is a dangerous word in math. Never that I can think of right at this second. I, I suppose it's a possibility, but nothing that I can think of right now. Okay, cosine of negative 60 degrees. Well, cosine is an even function, so that is going to be equal to cosine at 60 degrees, which we know, in fact, we just used that value up above. Sine of a negative 390 degrees. Well, sine is an odd function, so that is equal to the sine, the negative sine function value of a positive 390 degrees, or the opposite of the sine of 390. Well, 390 is, is an angle of rotation. What is its reference angle? What's it coterminal with? If I take away one rotation, I can say, you know what, this is equal to the sine of 30 degrees, because they are going to terminate or end at the same place. This is the reference for that angle. 
and the sine at 30 degrees is 1 half. Since I have the opposite of that, the answer is a negative 1 half. And finally, let's look at this one, tangent of a negative 37 pi fourths. So we know we've got a pi fourth value, so tangent is either going to be 1 or negative 1, because tangent is sine over cosine, which at the 45s are square root 2 over 2 over square root 2 over 2. So what we need to figure out is what is our simplest form, what's our reference angle for this? Well, 2 pi is a full rotation, and if I put that in terms of fourths, I have 8 pi fourths is a full rotation. How many 8s are in 37? Well, 8 times 4 is, is, 30, is uh, 32, so I can undo 4 rotations and you say, you know what, this is going to be coterminal with tangent of negative 5 pi fourths, so it's going to end or stop at the same place. And tangent is an odd function, so I can say that that is the same thing as the opposite at the tangent function value of a positive 5 pi fourths. And where is 5 pi fourths on my unit circle? Well, I've got 1 pi fourth, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi fourths lands in quadrant 3. And in quadrant 3, oh, tangent is, is 1, it's a positive 1. Don't forget, I've got that negative out front, so my result is a negative one.